What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video we're going to be talking about setting up materials in Revit and to be more specific I'm going to be showing you how to create a very realistic wood flooring like wood board floor uh, and uh, or floorboards and I'm going to be showing you how to set it up properly so you have a very realistic effect. Uh, the idea is you can find a wood flooring manufacturer, you can get basic images of their website and then if you just adapt that with a little bit of Photoshop and of course setting it all up in Revit you can actually have very accurate and very high quality renderings of your floors and generally rooms in Revit. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, now before I get into that I would just like to ask you to check out my website balkanarctic.com that's the first link just below this video uh, that's my uh, kind of a course platform where I have over a hundred hours of uh, courses and content and I'm adding more each month so if you're really serious about learning Revit that's definitely the best place to start uh, because I take the extra time to go slowly step by step and explore all of Revit's complex topics in depth so check it out if you're interested. Also, if you want all of my Revit project files, like this project file that we're going to be creating in this video, as well as the rest of my files, you can find all of that on my Patreon page, which is the second link just below this video. So check it out if you're interested. Okay, so without any further ado, let's go straight into Revit. And here we are in Photoshop. Well, we're going to be starting this tutorial in Photoshop just because we have to prepare our images a little bit before we load them in just to make sure that everything works perfectly. Uh, so you have to know that these images will be tiled. That means that this image will be repeated on all sides. So this image is going to be copied off to one side, off to the other, above, below, and so on to create that endless uh, floor effect. Uh, now, uh, to make sure that that, that looks correct, uh, we cannot have certain things. For example, this uh, floorboard here, which is kind of cut off halfway. So we actually have to uh, crop this out. So I'm just going to go here to the uh, crop tool. Let's see. There we go. And then I can just bring this up a little bit just like so. You can be really careful and kind of get it exactly there. There we go. Perfect. Hit finish. And now you can make some adjustments. Uh, now that's, re that's really up to you. Do you prefer to make this make sure that this looks absolutely perfect in the rendering or do you want to be realistic and you just want to use the material that was sent uh, from uh, from the manufacturer so if you get this from the manufacturer you don't want to edit that too much because it's well it's not going to be true <laughs> if you make too many edits so I'm just going to be keeping this as is it's still going to give us a perfect result uh, uh, but uh, as I said if you want you can kind of take this a little bit further uh, so the next step that they like to do is make sure that the dimensions are correct so what I do for that is uh, first I go here into the edit button I go to preferences and then here we have units and rulers uh, now here you can go to uh, rulers and just make sure that it's in the units you prefer using I prefer centimeters so I'm just going to check that click OK and then what I'm going to do is go here to the image and then go to image size and just check what we have here so as you can see uh, for the document size we have the width and the height and currently it says that the width is 28 centimeters 0.22 and then the height is 17.6. Uh, now let's say that I have the dimensions from the manufacturer and I know that the height of each of these uh, wood elements, uh, uh, wood boards uh, is eight centimeters. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would make it 64 in total. So I would just come here to the document size, go to height and just type in 64. Uh, now that's immediately going to give me the width which is 102.61 and you just want to remember that or better yet write it down which is exactly what I'm doing now so this is 102.61 and this is 64 uh, so I want to have that uh, those numbers so I can use that in Revit later on now it's going to make everything a little bit larger just like so and yeah there we go so our image for now is completed so what I'm going to do is just go here to file and then save uh, and then here we have the kind of the JPEG options, uh, maximum quality, that's okay, click OK. And now this is saved. But now I want to create a separate image, which is going to be my bump map. So that's going to 
tell Revit uh, what, uh, uh, where are kind of the differentiations in height or what is kind of the bump of this material. And usually everything that you represent as black in a bump map is going to be everything that's kind of indented and everything that's white is kind of everything that's on the surface. So you can achieve that by going here to your layers, uh, then go to uh, adjustment layers. Now, if you don't see them here, just go here to window and then find adjustments. Uh, now here I do have them. So I'm just going to add a black and white adjustment. See, now Revit is going to be using, as I said, everything that's dark, it's going to be indented and everything that's white, it's going to be up and flat. So you wanna go here and you wanna adjust the, the contrast perhaps by going to levels and then we can bring this in really closely. There we go, perhaps go like that. I don't want too much. Yeah, just like so. Uh, now you can fix this a little bit. For example, I don't want these uh, parts here to appear as holes. So I can fix that by perhaps going here to the uh, selection wand, uh, go to the material and then perhaps select. Okay, this was a, perhaps a, a bit too much. Let's deselect that. Let's crank the tolerance down to 10. Let's try again. Yeah, there we go. So I would just select these very dark elements that they don't want to appear as holes. Uh, and just, just a few of them, not all of them, perhaps this one as well. And then I would go to my levels, go here to the, to the brush tool. And then I would just use a brush that's uh, kind of really light gray like this. And now when we go over that, See, now it doesn't appear as black. It has that grayish color. So it's not going to have that much of an indentation. Then I'm just going to right click, deselect this. There we go. And then finally, uh, one trick that I like to use, which you don't have to, but I do prefer it because it makes everything look so much better. And that is to highlight or kind of express these differences between the, the wood boards. So where one wood board starts and the other starts, you want to emphasize this as much as possible. Uh, now, what I like to do for this is just add a new layer on top of everything. Then I like to go here to the selection tool, use the single row or something like that. Now in this case, we'll see perhaps we would need a bit more than a single row and then just go like that. See how I have selected just a few pixels, pixel rows there. Then I would zoom in here, again, select a few rows. Uh, make sure that here it, uh, it's set to this add to selection. Then you wanna go here, just like so. And just go all the way down and make sure to emphasize all of these. Here it's really important as you can see. Yeah, here as well. Okay, there we go, and one more. There we go. Okay, so once we have all of this selected, then you go to your brush tool, you set it to black and white and you go with black and then you just paint all of this black, see? So I'm just going to paint it all black like so. And that's just going to emphasize those differences. Uh, you also might want to go here to the rectangle tool and then select the vertical ones, just like this. So that one there. We have one here. Again, make sure to try to follow the size of the original ones. We have one here. So you're basically kind of repeating the tiling. Uh, this is also useful when you have any sort of uh, tiles or blocks or bricks or anything like that. So anywhere where you have uh, elements that come together like this, I like to emphasize the, the breaks just like that. And again, go back to the brush tool and just color them uh, black. Okay, go back to the selection tool, right click uh, to deselect, and then it should look something like this. Uh, so as you can see, now this is emphasized a lot more. Okay, so once we have something that looks like this, uh, now it's time to go to file, save as, and then I'm just going to be saving this on my desktop. Uh, that's, yeah, that's the desktop. And then this is going to be a JPEG image. We can go with floorboards. And in this case, I'm just going to write, uh, just to, just perhaps add dash, or it doesn't have to be dash. I just like to add a BW for black and white, or uh, you can call it bump. That could work as well. You save that as a JPEG, okay. 
and now it's time that we can finally go into a rabbit. And in Revit, it's actually going to be a lot easier. Well, there is a little less, less work in Revit. So what you want to do is go here and let's start a blank project for this. I'm just going to go to models, to new, and for the template file, I'm just going to be choosing one of my own personal templates. So I'm just going to be using my custom Balkan Arctic template. And if you want to check out my templates, you can find them on my website, balkanarctic.com. That is going to be the third link in the description. So check it out if you're interested. Anyways, let's start up Revit. And we're just going to be creating a blank uh, floor in the middle. So let's go here. I go to the floor tool, go to the uh, rectangle place a rectangle like that, hit finish, there we go. Then you want to go into edit type. Uh, let's duplicate this one and let's call this one the, I don't know, 150 millimeter wood floor. Okay, so then you'll go into structure, you go into edit. Uh, here I'm going to keep the base as is, I'm just going to add that finish material, so just insert a new material here. Uh, the function is going to be finish and then you go to thickness. Thickness can be, I don't know, something like two centimeters, or that will be 0 0.2, 0 0.02. Yeah, because this is in meters, so this is uh, two centimeters in meters. Anyways, <laughs> let's go here to uh, material, click, and now this is the crucial point. So when you're creating a new material in Revit, in most cases you want to start off with the material that's closest to that. So because this is going to be a wood material, I'm just going to type in wood and just search to see whatever I have. So here, for example, I have this birch wood, cherry wood, that's okay. I'm just going to go with this one, for example, right click, go to duplicate, and then let's call this our floor boards. Okay, so we have created this new material. Uh, now for this material, again, really crucial is to go to the Appearance tab and then go here to the Duplicate Asset option. Now this is going to duplicate the asset. Uh, this might not seem important right now, but if you make any changes to this new material, if you didn't duplicate this asset, it's going to mess up the original material and you don't want to do so. Okay, moving forward, uh, now you can see why we selected a wood material, because now here when we come you can see that we have all of these wood options. So we have a wood here, we have that relief pattern, so uh, in some cases it's called a bump mat, here it's called a relief pattern for wood. So it's basically the same thing. Uh, and then here we have the option to add an image, stain, and so on. Uh, so let's go here to the image. Uh, you can click on the link below to load in your wood image. Now mine is saved on my desktop. Uh, floorboards open. There we go. So we have our floorboards. Now we're not really sure what these uh, are set up like, what the dimensions are like. So you want to go to the image. You have this option to edit the image and then you go to edit. And then once you're here, you can make some adjustments. Now you can see that that turned this into a square image and we don't want that. So we can go here down to, oops, try not to scroll in these fields because it's going to mess everything up. So anyways, I uh, try to go here to scale, uh, make sure to unlock this and the proportions, and then the sample size will have the width of, what did we say? 1.0261 meters. So this was the, the width and then the height was 64 centimeters or 0.64 meters and then this is now in the correct dimensions so we're happy with that here we have that tile option it's checked on tile that's okay set it to tile uh, now here we do have the stain now you can just uncheck that and then it's going to have that natural uh, finish it doesn't have to add that color now of course you can stain it with any color that you might want uh, now for the finish uh, this is something that you want to double check with the manufacturer so if manufacturer says it's a satin finish you give it a satin finish if it's a, if they say it's a glossy finish you add it a glossy finish now I'm just going to go with sa uh, satin because I, I like it uh, use for furniture or flooring make sure to set it to what that actually is and then finally we have that relief pattern so we want to check that and here it has based on grain or it has custom now if you set it to custom it's going to open up the option for an image let's see okay yeah, custom, and then you can load in an image. So we have this floorboards bump, I can open that up, 
And now, as you can see, it's going to show this. Uh, now, obviously, we have to set up the dimensions again, unfortunately, but yeah, uh, we can do that. So we just go here, scroll below. Again, we want to just unconstrain these proportions. Uh, the width is 1.0261, and then this is 0.64. Okay, done. And now we're happy with that. And you will notice that this now, you can see the separation between the floorboards is much nicer. This is why I prefer this method. This is why we added those black lines. I think it looks so much better like this. Uh, also, one quick tip, if you want to see this better, uh, this cube doesn't really represent what the floor would look like. You can also go here to the scene and then you should have, let's see, yeah, plane. So that shows it. Uh, how that would look like on a floor. Okay, in this case it looks terrible, so perhaps that might not be ideal. Let's see. Perhaps even as a wall it will show a little bit nicer. Yeah, I think this displays like what the floor would look like a little bit better. Even though the, the plane is the proper one for floors, yeah, you just saw it doesn't look good. <laughs> so anyways, uh, you can go to graphics, you can play around with the graphics. I'm not going to bother with that because this is a more of a tutorial that shows kind of the realistic material and that shows the appearance, but this is definitely something that you can check out. Anyways, I'm just going to click OK. Uh, I'm going to click OK again, OK again, and now we have that material. So if I go to the 3D view, See, now you can see that we have those floorboards. It shows the separation. And if we render this, it's going to look even better. So if I just try the, the, the ray trace option, I think it's going to look really, really good. So let's see. Let's give it a few moments. Yeah, as you can see, the, the material looks really high quality. You can see the separation between the, uh, the actual wood boards. So this I, I really like. So there you go, let's close out of this. That's how you create a realistic material in Revit. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new. Tell me in the comments section below, did you learn something new? And of course, if you want to learn more about Revit, as I said, BalkanArchitect.com is the best place to go. Uh, there I have over a hundred hours of courses and I'm adding more and more each month. So you might want to sign up there. That's going to be the first link just below this video. Also, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video. Comment below if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. And if you want my Revit project files like this uh, material that we have created, as well as uh, the, the images and, and the, the bump map, you can find all of them on my Patreon page, which is the second link in the description. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Have a nice day.